Okay, today we are kicking off Unit 8, um, and we are going to be focusing on kind of tools to help us solve all polynomial functions. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to be using some of the things that we have learned previously, like synthetic division. So let's start by just reviewing a couple synthetic division problems. Okay, so remember when we have the divisor and it's as that factor, remember we change the sign to put it in our little box. And then before we write our coefficients, we check and make sure that we're not missing any x's. So I have x to the fourth, x to the third. Now I have zero x squared because I'm missing that term. And then I have three x and one. So I need that zero for the placeholder for the squares, but I've got one, negative two, zero, three, and one. All right, so remember that first one just comes straight down under the line. And then I do three times one is three, and then combine those, I get one. Three times one is three. Combine those, I get three. Three times three is nine. 3 plus 9 is 12, and 3 times 12 is 36. So we see, remember this last little column, that's our remainder. Now, when we are x to the fourth and we divide it by an x, remember it decreases the uh, degree of our polynomial. So where we were x to the fourth, now we are 1x to the third, I can put the 1 or not, plus 1x squared plus 3x plus 12, and then remember when I have that remainder, I put plus remainder over divisor. So there's our first synthetic division. All right, our next one. So again, we take the divisor, we change that uh, sign so that we have the root, and then we check before we write our, our coefficients. We have 5, 4, Notice I'm missing my x to the third, so we have zero x to the third. I have x squared, x, and my constant. So I have four, negative three, zero, two, negative 30, and negative 16. Draw my line. Now my first one goes straight down. Two times four is eight. Negative three and eight is five. 2 times 5 is 10, 0 plus 10 is 10, 2 times 10 is 20, 2 plus 20 is 22, 2 times 22 is 44, negative 30 and 44 is 14, and 2 times 14 is 28, negative 16 and 28 is positive 12. Okay, again, I was x to the fifth, I divided by an x, so now we decrease the power, so we have 4x to the 4th plus 5x to the 3rd plus 10x squared plus 22x plus 14. And then remember that last column is our remainder, so we have plus 12 over x minus 2. All right. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about ways to figure out um, what the possible factors are. So we're going to use the rational root theorem and it says for every polynomial equation in one variable with an integer coefficients, all possible rational solutions can be found by p over q where p is a factor of the constant and q is a factor of the lead coefficient in standard form. Okay, so what that means is that P is the factors of all the last term, right? That constant term, the term with no X's. Q is all the factors of the leading coefficient. So a lot of times it's going to be one. And then you're just going to take all those factors P and divide them by Q. All right, so now we're going to start and we've got like a little place for all of these. So when we look at the 16 and we think about, okay, what are the factors of 16? So I just kind of go in numerical order. So I know 1 is 1. It's even, so I know 2 is. 3 is not a factor. 4 is, and 4 times 4 is uh, 16. 5 is not. 6 is not. I know 2 times 8 is. So there's my 8. And then I know that my 1 pairs with the 16. Okay, so those are all my factor pairs of 16. Okay, and then I know that for the factor, the coefficient is just a 1, so it's a positive or negative 1. 
And so then we take all of these divided by one, which isn't gonna change it. So we're just gonna have plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, plus or minus eight, and plus or minus 16. Okay, so now we're gonna use this list of factors to see, okay, what works? A lot of times I start with one or negative one because very frequently those are factors. Um, but really guys, this is kind of a guess and check process. So it kind of will feel a little tedious at first. Um, so we're gonna just start over here. So I'm gonna start with one. Like I said, I usually start with one and negative one. And so I look and I say, okay, I've got x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and 16. So I don't have any placeholders. So I'm just gonna put my one, my negative eight, 24, negative 32, and positive 16. Okay, so now I start. Synthetic division, I'm just gonna see if this works. So one times one is one. That gives me negative seven. That gives me negative seven. And that is 17, one times 17. That is negative 15 when I combine those. And then, mm, so close, I get negative 15, but we do have a remainder. Okay, so that means one is not a factor. So we're gonna try, let's try negative one. All right, so negative one. So again, I'm gonna put my factor, or my coefficients, one, negative eight, 24, negative 32, and 16. All right, we'll see how we do here. If we bring down that one, negative one times one is negative one. That's negative nine. Negative one times negative nine is positive nine. That's 33. Negative one times 33 is negative 33. And what will we can see really quick, like that's not gonna work, okay? So we can just stop there. We don't have to keep going. All right, so let's try two. Okay, so again, I'm just going to keep going back to that original list of coefficients until I can find one that works. Okay, bring down my one. Two times one is two. Okay, that brings me negative six. Two times negative six is negative 12. When I combine those, I get positive 12. Two times positive 12 is 24. When I combine that, I get negative eight. Two times negative eight. All right, negative 16, they cancel out. So there we go, two is one of our factors. So I'm gonna go up here and say x is equal to two, and we're gonna just kind of start a running list. Okay, now I do wanna make the point that sometimes, like if you get here, every once in a while, like this is an x to the fourth, and this is an x to the third. So sometimes you might want to like stop there and see could this like be factored by grouping or like if you get to an x squared, sometimes you may want to stop there and see if that can group. Um, so let's just go to go now. We're not going to go back to our original list of factors. We have a new polynomial that now we can divide. Now, what I want you to notice here is that if we think about this as a new polynomial, because this would be x to the third minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 8, now we have kind of a new P, right? So the P now is a, a eight. So we can kind of take 16 out of our list, right? And we know we can take one out of our list because if one wasn't a factor of our original one, it's not gonna be a factor of the new one. And since that 16 is larger than the new P that we have, we know that we don't even have to worry about that one anymore. Okay, now, I have done this, so I know, but again, this is going to be kind of a guess and check process, but I am going to try two again. All right, so I bring down my one. Oops, sorry. One. Two times one is two. There's negative four. Two times negative four is negative eight. That gives me positive four, and two times positive four is positive eight. Now, again, guys, I kind of knew that, so I used a little, you know, but you'll just kind of keep checking. So now I see that I have two twos. Now I see that this, if this was an x to the fourth and I reduced it once to an x to the third, then this is an x squared. So I have x squared minus 4x plus 4. So I think, oh, wait, this factor. So you could keep going with synthetic division, but a lot of the time, if we get to a, um, a, tri a trinomial or an x squared, then we could see if we want to factor or if it could be factored. So when we multiply to 4, 
What multiplies to 4 and combines to negative 4? Well, that would be negative 2 and negative 2. So we factor x minus 2 times x minus 2. So we get two more 2s. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 2s. So we would say x is equal to 2. And we use this word called multiplicity with a multiplicity of 4. Okay? So remember, like, if we have a double root, you know, we'd say it has multiplicity 2. But since we have this root 1, 2, 3, 4 times, it has a multiplicity of 4. Okay? So x is equal to 2 um, times 2 times 2 times 2. So there's two, four twos. All right. Looking at our next one. So now we notice that this is not ready to kind of be um, not ready for synthetic division, right? Because we have to have it equal to zero. So we're going to start by moving our 28 over. And then we have plus 17x minus 28 is equal to zero. Okay, so now we're ready to go. Now I'm looking for the factors of 28. That's my P. So I know I have 1 plus or minus 2. 3 is not a factor, 4 is, 5 is not, 6 is not, but 7 is, 8, 9, 10, no, but then I think, okay, what has to go with the 2? That's that 14, and then what goes with 1? Plus or minus 28. Again, we have a coefficient of 1 on our leading coefficient, so that's just a plus or minus 1. So then P over Q is just that list of P's, so plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, 7, 14, 28. All right, so we are going to start, and um, again, like I said, I typically start with 1 because it, it usually works out. All right, so I check. I have x to the third, x squared, x, and a constant, so I don't have any, I don't need any placeholders. So I have 1, positive 10, 17, and negative 28. Right, I bring down my 1. 1 times 1 is 1. That is 11. 1 times 11 is 11. That is positive 28. 1 times 28. Ah, look, it worked. Okay, so now I want to think, all right, I've got 1 as a factor. So up here I'm going to say x is equal to 1. And then again I think, well, hey, this was x to the third, so this is an x squared. So can I factor it? x squared plus 11x plus 28 is equal to 0. So again, guys, I will say you can keep doing synthetic division, or like I said, when you get to something that can factor, you can go jump over to factoring. So I think about what multiplies to give me positive 28 and combines to give me 11. Well, that's positive 7 and positive 4. So I factor x plus 7, x plus plus 4 is equal to 0, so x is equal to negative 7 and negative 4. And then I just put those up with my other root, my 1, and I've got negative 7 and negative 4. Okay, next, we've got our next one. We have, this time, we have a coefficient on our uh, leading term, so it's going to change kind of what our p and q is a little bit more. So we, again, have to get our uh, constant over. So I have 3x to the third plus 10x squared minus 27x minus 10 is equal to 0. Okay, so our factors, p, the factors of our constant. So I have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, 3, 4 are not factors. I have 5, and I have 10. Okay, now I have this 3, so that means I do have factors, so I have plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. Well, we know when we divide all of these by 1, they're not going to change, so I'm going to bring those down, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, 5, and 10, but now I have to take each one of them and divide them by 3. So now I also have plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 2 thirds, plus or minus 5 thirds, and plus or minus 10 thirds. Okay, now when I start synthetic division, I don't know about you, but I don't really want to plug these in, okay? So I'm going to start with my integers first to just see if I can find any of those that work. 
So again, I usually start with 1 and negative 1 and just see if those work. I check and make sure I don't have any holes. So x to the third, x squared, x, and constants. So I have 3, positive 10, negative 27, and negative 10. So I bring my first one down. 1 times 3 is 3. That's 13. 1 times 13 is 13. I get negative 14. Well, that's not going to work, right? So I can stop there. It's not 1. All right, we can do negative 1. So 3, 10, negative 27, negative 10. Bring down my 3. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. That gives me 7. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. Negative 34. That one's not going to work either. All right, let's try 2. Again, I'm just still using those same original coefficients because I haven't found one that works yet. So I bring down my 3. 2 times 3 is 6. That is 16. 2 times 16 is 32. Negative 27 and 32 is positive 5. There we go. 2 times 5, that's positive 10. So we found one that works. So we go up to our, uh, put up, up our line. We put our x is equal to 2. All right, again. Now, this was an x to the third, so when I take out one of those x's, now this is an x squared equation. So again, you can keep doing um, synthetic division if that works for you, but most of us are going to probably want to come over and factor. So 3x squared plus 16x plus 5 is equal to 0. So I'm looking for numbers that multiply to give me 15 and combine to give me 16, because remember when I have that coefficient, I have to multiply the coefficient on the leading term by the 5, a times c, to get the 15. So those numbers would be 15 and 1. Okay, so remember when I have that leading co coefficient, I do that first step, I have an extra step there, and then I have an extra step at the end. Because remember, this doesn't work. x times x doesn't give me 3x. Remember, I have to divide by that leading coefficient. Now, this simplifies, right, x plus 5, and then x plus and then 1 third. Now, again, if we, were, if we weren't solving, if it was just factoring, then we'd swing that up. But remember, if we're solving, we just want our x's by itself. So then we'd have x is equal to negative 5 and negative 1 third. So those are our other solutions. Okay, looking at our next one. So... We look and say, okay, positive 6, so this one's already equal to 0, so I have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6, our leading coefficient, plus or minus 1. So I'm going to skip it writing it. We know it's just going to be P over Q is just going to be the list of P's, so we can bring that down. Okay, now I check. I have X to the 4th. Uh-oh, I'm missing an x to the third, so I need a zero placeholder. Then I have an x squared, an x, and a constant. <coughs> so I bring down, again, I'm going to start with my 1 and my negative 1. So I'm going to start with 1. So I have 1, 0, negative 5, negative 10, and negative 6. Bring down my 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1, that's negative 4, 1 times negative 4 is negative 4, that's negative 14, that's not going to work. Let's try our negative 1. So again, same coefficients, because I still haven't found a 0 yet. I bring down my 1, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Combine those, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So negative 5 and 1 is 4, negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. That gives me negative 6. All right, this one's going to work. Negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6, so that's 0. All right, so there's our first 0. x is equal to negative 1. So I usually either circle it here or just go ahead and write it over in the, in the parentheses. Okay, so now, remember, we don't want to go back to our original. We have a new function here. Now, the coefficient p is still 6, so still I kind of have all of these are fair game. Um, so, uh, let's start with, 
I don't know, let's go to the next one, two. Okay, so I have, I'm going to bring these coefficients down. So I have one, negative one, negative four, and negative six. So I bring down my one, two times one is two. So that combines to one, two times one is two. That gives me negative two. Mm, that's not going to work. That gives me negative four. Okay, so two is not one. What about negative two? So again, I'm bringing these coefficients. So one, negative one, negative four, and negative six. So I bring down my one. Negative two times one is negative two. That's negative three. That's positive six. That's two. That's going to be negative four, so that's not going to work. All right, let's try three. So I'm going to come over here. So I've done one and twos didn't work. Um, you know, one could be a root again, but let's just keep going with, let's try our next one, three. So I have one, uh, negative one, negative four, and negative six. I bring down my one. One times three is three. That combines to two. Three times two is six. That combines to two. Three times two, hey, that one works, is six. Okay, so we have no remainder. So now we have another zero, three. Okay, so now remember, we started with an x to the fourth. We found one root, so that made this an x to the third. We found a second root, so now remember this is an x squared equation. So I want to see, can it factor? x squared plus 2x plus 2 is equal to zero. Well, are there two numbers that multiply to 2 and combine to 2? Well, the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1, and they would combine to 3. So if it's not factorable, then i got to think, well, hey, what's another way to solve a quadratic equation that isn't factorable? And then we remember our quadratic formula. Remember, that works every time. So here, remember, we say, okay, what are our a, b, and c? So a would be 1. B would be 2, and C would be 2. So I'm going to write down the quadratic formula again. Remember, x is equal to negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So we plug in. So I've got negative B. So that is going to be negative 2 plus or minus square root 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 all over 2 times 1. So we're just going to kind of keep simplifying. I'm going to go back up here. So negative 2 plus or minus the square root. Uh, that's going to be 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Times 2 is negative 8. All over 2. So we go over here. Negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2. All right. See, we're really putting it all together here. We've got a square root of a negative. If you remember from last semester, when we had square roots of negatives, those are imaginary numbers. So I've got my negative 2 plus or minus. Remember, the square root of 2 is 2. Sorry, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of that negative is an i. So I have 2i over 2. And then remember, if they can all be reduced, then I want to go ahead and reduce them. So I've got my 2, 2, and 2 would all reduce, so I have negative 1 plus or minus i. So I bring that up here to my roots, so I have negative 1 plus or minus i. So there's my 1, 2, 3, 4 roots. All right, last example. So we have, notice, we see there's no constant. Right? So I can't take the coefficient of this, like I can't do my P and Q if there's not a constant. But what do we see? We have an X in every term, so I can factor out that X. So I have X to the fourth minus 4X to the third minus 2X squared plus 4X plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, the great thing about that is it already gave us one of our zeros, right? Because if we factor out X as a GCF, then we know that one of our zeros has to be zero. Sorry, that was kind of like a mistake. Let's make that a zero. Okay, so now we can do synthetic division. We can figure out our P's and Q's. Now this is going to be easy. We got plus or minus one, and then we got plus or minus one, 
So the only ones that we can look for, the real factors that we're going to be looking for is one. So let's start with one. We make sure we've got all of our terms of x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and a constant. So we bring our coefficients down, one, negative four, negative two, positive four, and positive one. We bring down our one, one times one is one, that's negative three, one times negative three is negative three, that is negative five, one times negative five is negative five, that's negative one, one times negative one is negative one, hey, it worked, okay, so there's one is one of our other zeros, all right, <coughs> so now I'll go from there, um, let's see, I'm going to try negative one now. I bring down my one, negative one times one is negative one, that's negative four, negative one times negative four is positive four, that's negative one, negative one times negative one is one, and that's zero, so now I've got another zero as negative one. Okay, so then I look and I say, okay, we started with x to the fifth, we factored out one, we got x to the fourth, so we found another root that took me to x to the third, and then we found another root, so now I have an x squared, so this again, we can say is x squared minus 4x minus one is equal to zero. So we think, okay, are there any numbers that multiply to negative one that combine to negative four? Nope, there are not, right? So we're gonna do our quadratic formula again. So we have one, b is one, sorry, a is one, b is negative four, and c is negative one. <clears throat> All right, I'm not gonna write the formula this time because we just did it. But remember, it's opposite of b, so four plus or minus the square root, b squared, so negative four squared, minus four times one times negative one, all over two times one. So I'm going to kind of come over here so I give myself room. X is equal to, so 4 plus or minus 4 squared, negative 4 squared is 16. Minus 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. All over 2. So we have 4 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2. Square root of 20, I've got a 4 and a 5 in there. So remember, square root of 4 is 2, so I have 4 plus or minus, the 2 comes out, and the 5 goes, stays in, over 2. And again, remember, if I, can just, if I can reduce all of the coefficients, then I can do that. So that would be 2, 1, and we cancel that out. So I have 2 plus or minus root 5. So those are our last two zeros, 2 plus or minus root 5. So I have 1, 2, 3 four or five solutions just like I thought I would. And that is it for today.